Hello, this video will deal with a very brief episode of deliverance from the ministry of Jesus, Matthew 9, 32 through 34. It's very interesting. Jesus does not speak, or at least his words are not recorded, if he said any. Very succinct, very concise. Matthew sometimes is very long, sometimes he's very brief. Uh, this episode takes place after the healing of two blind men in another district. And this picks up in Matthew 9, 32. As they were going away, behold, a demon-oppressed man was brought to him who was mute. And when the demon had been cast out, the mute man spoke. And the crowds marveled, saying, Never was anything like this seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He casts out demons by the prince of demons. Now, as I said, Jesus is not recorded as saying anything. We don't know, but we're not told if he does. Um, a person is brought to him who is known or suspected to be troubled by demons. He can't talk. And Jesus casts out the demon. It says, when the demon had been cast out, the mute man spoke. Now, there are a number of episodes in the Gospels where people are recorded by the Gospels as having demonic oppression or of some sort, which when the demons are cast out, the person's physical or mental affliction is over. Uh, the best known one, best known two of these is the woman with the spirit of infirmity and the boy with the deaf and dumb spirit, which we'll deal with in another time. But here in Matthew 9, once the demon was cast out, and it sounds as though it was just very quick, very nothing to it, the person suddenly could speak. Now, we're not told how long a period it was where he couldn't speak, but if you've ever not been able to talk, it's very frustrating. Jesus casts out the demon and the mute man spoke. Now, what we see here is muteness, the inability to speak, which from all intents and purposes caused by a demon. Uh, we're not told many times in the Gospels where this happens, but it is it does occur a number of times. And in these videos, I'll point out each time it does. So the crowds were going wild, as they would say today. And the Pharisees, who were very opposed to anything Jesus was doing, says, well, he casts out demons by the prince of demons. If you look at the four Gospels, you'll see that this was not an uncommon complaint on the part of of the religious establishment. It was well known that Jesus was healing the sick and casting out demons. Everybody understood demons. They understood that this was not a rare occurrence. There in the early, um, the early chapters of Mark, you know, it happens right in the synagogue. So we have a, a demon possessed or demon oppressed person. The Pharisee says he casts out demons by the prince of demons. Well, look at the other places in the Gospels where Jesus is accused of doing whatever he's doing by demonic power. Later on, he deals with this. We'll take this up in more detail. He says, well, you know, if I cast out demons by the prince of demons, what about your exorcists? Who do, by what spirit do they work? In those days, there were Jewish exorcists. There were other types of exorcists as well. But we're talk, told about Jesus here and the Pharisees basically accuse him falsely of operating by the spirit of Belial or Satan. And Jesus does not even deal with that accusation at this time. So what's the takeaway here? People can be oppressed. The oppression can produce physical or other disabilities or diseases, which when the demons are taken care of, the person's ability to do what they couldn't before or their um, physical or mental affliction vanishes. And here, <laughs> there are people who will accuse someone in deliverance ministry of operating by another spirit or wrong spirit. Uh, we can't worry about that, but don't be surprised if somebody refers to you or your ministry and says, well, you know, that's you know making up some sort of um, accusation or some sort of word against you. It has happened before. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this story 
of the demon oppressed man, the man with a mute spirit. And we thank you that we still have the power of Jesus happening today as it was in those days. And sure, it's a very remarkable thing. These things are not common, but we pray that as we go out and minister the power of Christ to other people, that there will be signs and wonders, people healed, people delivered, and that people will recognize this is by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we operate in his power by his spirit for his glory. And Father, I pray that as we study the episodes in the Gospels and the Acts where demons are dealt with by the power of Christ, that we will have greater faith, greater understanding, greater boldness, and greater effectiveness in helping anyone who is oppressed by demons or is in any way troubled by them, that we have what we need to take care of this. And we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.